Hey everyone, welcome back. Throughout the series, we were talking about different component to build the networking on Azure Cloud. And this time, we are going to talk about Azure Virtual Van. So let's get started. Azure Virtual Van is indeed a managed networking services provided by Microsoft Azure. It is designed to simplify and optimize connectivity between your various branch offices data centers and Azure Cloud resources. Azure Virtual Van brings together networking, security, and routing features into a unified and centralized management interface. Key features of Azure Virtual Van basically includes your site-to-site -site connectivity. So Azure Virtual Van enables secure and efficient connectivity between your on-premises locations such as branch offices and data center and the Azure Cloud. So this site-to-site -site connectivity can be found from your SD-WAN equipments, maybe from the firewall or maybe the branch routers. It is also going to support your hub and spoke architecture. If you really want to control your tra traffic flow, then you can connect these different VNets in hub and spoke architecture or in a fashion. Then you have a global reach. Virtual van basically allows you to connect your branches globally. So that means you are going to use your Microsoft backbone uh, for this transit connectivity. So you can say this service is going to offer you the van infrastructure backbone as a service. And it is very well suited for the organization. Those are distributed geographical presence. Security enhancement wise, you can integrate your Azure firewall, virtual networks to enhance the network security posture for the services. Branch connectivity, as I mentioned, in the branches you might have the VPN CP or maybe the SD-WAN equipments to connect with these services. Routing optimization. So it gives you the flexibility to optimize your routing to get the better improved network performance. Top of that, it is cloud native services. That means Azure Virtual Van is designed to work seamlessly with other Azure services, providing a cloud native approach to the net networking. Let's understand why Virtual Van offers you a flexible approach to networking. So initially you can begin with virtual van with some specific use case that can be your express route, maybe site to site connectivity. And then top of that, maybe you want to add hub and spoke architecture, or maybe you want to enable security features while implementing those firewalls. As business requirements shift or expand, you can easily configure virtual van to address those new business use cases. This adaptability aligns with the dynamic nature of the modern IT environment, allowing organization to build and optimize network architecture in a way best suited to fulfill the infrastructure demand. Let's talk about the virtual van resources involved building this infrastructure. So the first component is going to be your virtual van resource. This is equivalent to the resource group what we have created. So it's a collection of multiple resources. It contains links to your virtual hub. So technically you are going to have at least one hub, which is going to be part of the virtual van. And virtual van are isolated from each other. So if you have another virtual van, these hubs cannot be common. So if this hub is part of this virtual van, maybe for example, if say one, this virtual hub is not going to be part of this van two. So virtual hubs in different virtual vans don't communicate to each other. So think about the two organization until you are not going to provision some sort of the communication, they are not going to talk to each other. 
the second component itself is going to be a hub. A virtual hub is a Microsoft managed virtual network basically. And this hub contains various service endpoints to enable the connectivity from your on-prem. Branches, data centers. So technically you are going to have those VPN gateways. Those are going to be part of this virtual hub. So site to site, point to point, express route, everything can be terminated on those endpoints. And this hub is going to be the core of your network in that particular region. You can also create multiple virtual hubs in the same region. And these hubs within the same virtual van, they are going to communicate to each other. So technically your design may look like this. You might have multiple VNets. Those are going to be the kind of the spokes. And then you have one managed VNet, which is going to be the part of the hub. And you're going to connect all these VNets to the hub VNet. And then this hub VNet is also going to terminate your on-prem connection that can be site-to-site, -site, express route, and point-to-site connectivity. This VNet has some lim limitation in terms of connectivity to the hub. You might have another hub, but you can connect only this VNet to one hub. So connecting to this, this hub is okay, but same time, if you want to connect to the another hub, this is not going to be work. Once you scale up your network, then you are going to have this kind of the topology. You might have the multiple hub, which is going to be part of the virtual van. So in this case, I have two hubs. And when this VNet wants to communicate with this VNet, this is going to be the direction. So all the traffic goes from this hub. And similarly, if this VNet wants to talk to this VNet, then this is going to go to the hub VNet. And from here, it will go to this connectivity, which is going to be between hub to hub. And then from this, hub the second hub uh, your traffic reaches to the other part of the vnet similarly the traffic which is coming from the on-prem it comes to the hub and then goes to another on-prem branch which is going to use this hub to hub transit link the last bit is going to be the route table you can create a virtual hub route and apply that route to the virtual hub route table you have option to add even the static routes you can apply multiple routes to the virtual hub routing table. Top of that, when you're creating a hub, you need to choose the SKU type. And that time you need to choose this appropriately based on how much you want to scale, the number of point to point connections, point to site, express route, and how much traffic the SKU can process. I'll see you in the next video.